Do you feel that at the core of Stop and Search there is a, a racist undertone from our police? Is that part of where you're coming from with this? There's, there's, there's no... Um, t- um, I, I, I strongly... Just to put it this way. Over the last 40 years, I've been stopped and searched over 125 times. And the prime reason is, it's called racial profiling. We've got to understand that stop and search came out of a racist law, okay, back in 1824. And it's just a continuation of it. So it's not surprising that if you're a black man, particularly, you're going to be nine times more likely to be stopped and searched than your white counterpart. But we are no more um, uh, criminals than any other race. So, but my thing is just simply this. If we could have the police doing it in a professional way, I, f- I find people would not be so uh, objective to stop and search. But young people, yeah. black and white, are telling us that the police are using excessive force just on an intervention um, Inquiry. It, 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 isn't people. you mentioned profiling there, and I suppose um, what you're getting at is, I suppose, unconscious bias. You might call it when the police are are stopping people, and, and you're saying they disproportionately stop black men, which they do, as the figures show. Um, when I look at <clears throat> the profile of, for example, people in Young Offenders Institute, half of whom are from an ethnic minority background, when you look at the profile of people who have been killed, um, the vast majority, especially in London, teenagers, are from an ethnic minority background. So do you not think, actually, when the police are policing, they do need to focus on those communities? Because that seems to be, you know, if you're a young black man, 24 times more likely to be a victim of homicide than a white man... And we're seeing these disproportionalities. So do you not think that the disproportionality in policing is coming from that rather than some sort of racist police wanting to stop black men all the time? Just to say simply this, you're right. We, 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 are, um, we, uh, we, we are in these figures both as victim and perpetrator. Unfortunately, the police are not very good at judging who's a victim or who's a perpetrator. All they see is the black man and therefore heightened tension. My thing is simply about the briefing. If the briefing is, is that, oh, this person is carrying, a, is carrying a weapon, so therefore you've got to be on heightened alert, we see from the, the figures from stop and search that less than 3% of the stop and search is for weapons, and even then, they, they, they are not very good at finding those weapons. They talk about 400 weapons a month that they're taking off the streets. But that equates to two knives a week per borough. Now, my thing is simply this. As a, stop, as a person who's part of the group called Communities Against Violence, we are much able to stop people, to take knives off of, off of people, and they're less likely to continue to walk with a knife. Just give an example. I work on security. On Saturday, in, in, the, in the place I was working, there was a massive fight, and one of the perpetrators took out a knife to go and stab the other person. I stepped in, managed to take that, to disarm him, take the knife from him. And that meant that no one got hurt. Now, that person was, is going to be less likely now to come back into my club with a knife. So this mm. is how we, we try to do it in a community to help ourselves.